On this trip through the digestive system, we study motility, which is the action of muscles of the GI tract that mix and propel its contents from the mouth to the anus. After a meal is digested, segmenting contractions are replaced by migrating motility complexes, peristaltic waves that travel over successively more distal parts of the small intestine. Overnight, one may experience six to eight of these complexes. Click the stomach to see an example. Strong progressive peristaltic waves begin in the body of the stomach and sweep over the pylorus. They empty the stomach completely because they relax the pyloric sphincter. This accounts for the forward progress of large objects, like a swallowed penny, through the GI tract. The next complex of peristaltic waves sweeps across the duodenum and first part of the jejunum. The next complex sweeps across the rest of the jejunum, and so on, until the waves reach the terminal ileum. The complex repeats from stomach to ileum about every 90 minutes during the interdigestive period. The intestinal hormone motilin mediates the activity. Click the intestine to observe the function. These powerful contractions perform a housekeeping function. They sweep undigested contents of the stomach and small intestine to the terminal ileum. Migrating motility complexes are a phenomenon of the enteric nervous system. Activity of extrinsic nerves is not required for the complexes, but it can modify them. Click the intestines for a summary. In summary, the type of motility in the small intestine during the interdigestive period is the migrating motility complex. It sweeps undigested contents of the stomach and small intestine into the terminal ileum. The major functions of the large intestine include storing and concentrating fecal matter. Chyme enters the large intestine as a result of the gastroileal reflex. Click the broom. Pressure in the terminal ileum opens the ileocecal sphincter. As the cecum fills, the sphincter closes, preventing the backward movement of chyme. Click the cecum. Typically, 500 milliliters of chyme enters the large intestine per day. Slow segmenting contractions, 1 to 5 per minute, knead the chyme, and expose it to the epithelium so that water and salts can be absorbed. Contractions of the transverse and descending colon form hostra as contents are shuttled back and forth. Absorption of water and salts continues. Click the transverse colon. During a meal, Propulsive multihostral contractions and a type of peristalsis called a mass movement occur. A mass movement is a rapidly spreading intense contraction that leaves the muscle contracted for some time. Contents progressing out of the ascending colon elicit the mass movement that often begins in the transverse colon. Fecal matter is moved ahead of the contraction, filling the sigmoid colon and rectum by the end of a meal. Click the rectum. When the rectum is distended, a person perceives the urge to defecate. The rectum contracts, the internal anal sphincter relaxes, and tone in the external anal sphincter increases. Defecation can be postponed because relaxation of the external anal sphincter is voluntary. The rectum accommodates, the internal anal sphincter constricts, and the urge to defecate dissipates.
Rectal contractions return the contents to the descending colon until the next mass movement. Click the sigmoid colon. When a person voluntarily relaxes the external anal sphincter, defecation occurs. Contraction of the rectum and sigmoid colon expel the feces. Voluntary movements that increase intra-abdominal pressure may aid defecation. Of the 500 milliliters of chyme that entered the large intestine, about 150 milliliters become feces. Feces contain primarily undigested foodstuffs and bacteria. Click the intestines for a summary. In summary, the type of motility in the large intestine during the interdigestive period is segmentation. This repetitive kneading movement promotes absorption of water and salts. During a meal, segmentation is replaced by a mass movement. These intense contractions propel the feces into the rectum from which they may be evacuated. Reflexes regulate the activity of the colon. On this page, we will create a table that describes colonic reflexes. Think about what you have learned and answer each question as it appears. You must answer the question correctly to proceed. We have learned that increased gastric motility causes increased peristaltic activity in the terminal ileum. This is the gastroileal reflex that is mediated by extrinsic nerves and the hormone gastrin. In addition to stimulating the terminal ileum, the gastroileal reflex promotes propulsive contractions in the colon. What is this type of movement called? What is the stimulus for the defecation reflex? Do nerves or hormones mediate this response? Will the neural response involve extrinsic nerves, a long reflex, only the enteric nervous system, a short reflex, or both? Extrinsic nerves regulate defecation, and the enteric nervous system is involved in coordinating the actions of rectum and colon. During the defecation reflex, when the rectum contracts, which anal sphincter relaxes involuntarily? Remember, control of the external anal sphincter is voluntary under normal circumstances. During the defecation reflex, when the external anal sphincter is voluntarily relaxed, will activity of the sigmoid colon increase or decrease? Pain, fear, and depression cause alterations in colonic motility. Frequently, the results are inhibition of motility and constipation. Anger, anxiety, and hostility may cause the opposite effect, rapid transit of contents. Physiologic responses to emotion vary from person to person, though none of us would deny that they occur. They are mediated by the extrinsic sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves to the colon. Vomiting is a complex reflex that is coordinated in the brain stem. It causes the forceful expulsion of intestinal and stomach contents through the mouth. Stimuli for the reflex include distension of the stomach, seasickness or dizziness from unequal vestibular stimulation, pain in the urogenital area, other painful injuries, increased intracranial pressure, tickling the back of the throat, 
Noxious chemicals, toxins, or drugs. Click the figure. Vomiting begins with copious salivation and a deep inspiration. Oh. Click the stomach. Reverse peristalsis in the proximal quarter of the small intestine moves bile-stained intestinal contents into the stomach. The abdominal wall muscles and diaphragm contract, increasing intra-abdominal pressure. Click the small intestine. Strong antral contractions shift stomach contents upward through the relaxed lower esophageal sphincter. The soft palate rises to close the nasal passageways. The intestinal and stomach contents are forced up the esophagus through the upper esophageal sphincter and out the mouth. Click the stomach. Vomiting can serve as a protective reflex that expels harmful substances from the body. Excessive vomiting can lead to dehydration, electrolyte imbalances, and alterations in acid-base balance. Click the stomach to see the process again. Here's a summary of what we've covered. The motility of each part of the GI tract serves its functions and depends on whether a person is digesting a meal or is between meals. Reflexes that depend on the volume and contents of a meal control motility. Vomiting can protect the body from harm. To test your knowledge, click the quiz button to go to the self-quiz.